All right, we're back, and we are going to now draw a sphere. Now, when you draw a sphere, there's a number of ways you could do it. You could obviously use a compass to get a perfect circle. Um, you could, uh, you know, some complex perspective ways to actually, um, you know, build ellipses uh, correctly using boxes and then bisecting them and then going around and, and basically constructing um, a circle that way. We may actually attempt to do that more in the advanced perspective section uh, of this program or this, this courses. But right now we're just trying to, again, wrap light around form, get used to drawing geometry and uh, basically doing these, these forms. So what I'm going to do is probably start in kind of a makeshift way of the way I just described, which is just to create two ellipses. And, and basically then wrap like a bowl around So what we have, we have an ellipse this way, an ellipse this way, more or less the same width. Now you've got to be able to eyeball that width and that's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, you know, you can just basically do a freehand circle that's going to be more or less um, somewhat of an ellipse because you're probably not going to lay down a perfect, perfect circle. But again, for the practical purposes of freehand perspective and freehand geometric form um, renditions, uh, that should suffice. And again, that's a pretty good circle. What I'll then do is remove my interior um, construction shapes and then do any cleanup around the form that needs to be done. Now again, the better your hand gets with this stuff, the easier it's going to be, the more confident you're going to be. I find a lot of times drawing geometry through the form like we've been talking about is best done um, quickly, you know, and the slower you go around the form, the harder it gets to keep the form clean. So you gotta be confident, you gotta be relaxed with your lines. Again, you can't be scribbling all over the place, but you just gotta kinda do the best you can and develop that good, keen surgeon's hand that we talk about all the time. And again, as if you are gonna be operating on somebody. Um, pressure sensitivity, the ability to manipulate tools of all sorts, ultimately, from your fingers to palette knives to brushes pens to quills. I mean, there's a lot of tools that we're going to be introducing you to that you're going to want to get proficient at because they're all going to benefit you. They're all going to add some little creative um, angle to your work that ultimately is going to allow you to, um, to become very unique as an artist. Now the shadow's coming in about here and it's running more or less right here. Now what we have here is something called reflected light, which again we haven't got into yet. We're still dealing with just drawing these things without terms being associated with them. And we will associate terms and we will talk about again, cast shadows, form shadows, reflected light, firm edges, soft edges, hard edges. Um, what's happening is the light is coming down, hitting the ground, and it bounces back up off this white object which is very reflective. If it was black we'd be getting less bounce light. Depends on the inherent color of the object that's bouncing light, how much reflection occurs back at the object. Chrome, for example, would reflect back an incredible amount of light, whereas in a flat black surface might absorb most of that light and it's not going to reflect, refract it back or reflect it back into the objects that are around it. Common sense. So you'll see it happening all the time. You may have not addressed it or associated it with, with what we could term the term reflected light, but that's what's kind of going on. Now, again, for this... Um, for this kind of shadow, we have to estimate the distances off. And again, this is just going to be an estimation. You know, is it going to be the systematic scientific way of casting shadows off of objects? No, that again, that's very advanced perspective. Um, it probably comes under the heading of some of the most advanced. Is, is again, kind of going in and, 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 and geometrically and, and mathematically projecting shadows correctly off of objects or being able to estimate where the shadows would actually come off of a complex formed object. And again, um, you know, that's, that's something that we will address, but not, not here, not right now. This is, this is simple freehand estimation perspective, which, which for most purposes in, in your preliminary sketches, in your concept sketching, in, uh, in things that you're trying to sell to clients, uh, you'll probably be just fine, um, you know, doing it that way. But ultimately there will come that time when you're doing a, 
your Magnus Opus piece, some really finished illustration, and you really want to nail the technical aspects of your your composition and your um, your you know pieces of your your illustration and fine art pieces, and then you'll have to go and plot it that way, and that's when that's that those are that stuff's going to really pay off in spades. So I got a little when I rate when you erase you're going to get little remnants of the paper. That's why you don't want to you don't want to erase violently. You don't want to sit there and just bear down and scrub that paper because you're going to tear the nap of the paper. And that's why we again it's one of the added benefits of using a cheap paper. Um, not only is it easy on the pocketbook, but it also promotes um, non-abusive drawing so that you because you're going to tear the surface, you're going to ruin your surface. There's no undo button. There's no um, you control Z or whatever, you know, where you actually undo what you just did. I mean, this is, um, you know, this is not something like that. This is actually, you know, you're going to have to be responsible for your pressure sensitivity. You're going to have to be responsible in, from the sense that if you push too hard, you're going to break your pencil. You're going to score your paper. You're not going to be able to remove the marks on it. And ultimately, if you raise too harshly, you're going to rip your paper nap. And, and then it allows the oils from your skin, from your hands to get into it. It's all blotchy looking, and it's almost impossible to get it back to a neutral nice. You could have a beautiful drawing and just mess up one area of your drawing like that, and it's just it's, it's heartbreaking. So you want to kind of try to start facilitating pressure sensitivity, respect for your tools and materials, and uh, ultimately try to really take it to heart. I have a little blotchiness in there, here and there. I, again, that's just my initial lay-in. What I'll do now is again, just kind of come around the form a little bit, reaffirming. Okay, just kind of a little sub shadow, the deep shadow under there. There's a name for that, and it slips my mind at this particular instance. I'll, I'll try to remember to enlighten you with it later. It's kind of a cool name, but I just I can't think of it offhand. I, I know I was just studying it and reading it not long ago, but don't worry. Again, there's a lot to digest, man. There's just volumes of information to digest. You're not going to ever feel like you've 100% got it. There's always going to be areas of weakness. There's always going to be areas that you need to go back and bone up on and get back in there and do some more study. Or there's going to be areas that you were good at at once that you've now neglected due to um, just the constraints of life and all the things that happen as you go through life, uh, challenging you as you are, um, you know, raising kids and doing whatever as you're as you're starting to really, um, you know, get back into studying. You know, you just got to cut yourself some slack and realize that. This is an incredibly intellectual pursuit combined with huge amounts of obviously um, of, of hand dexterity issues and stuff like that. So not only is it intellectually driven, but it's also driven by this idea that your hand has to execute. I, got, I know plenty of people that just know ridiculous amounts of information and still aren't good draftsmen. They aren't good painters. They, they think too much. They've learned a lot intellectually and think that that's going to carry their work. And reality is, is that the piece has to speak for itself. If your art has to be um, legitimized by, by a philosophical or intellectual explanation of it, I just don't put much bearing on it. I kind of think that, that the person really hasn't, didn't, they, missed their, they missed their cue, you know? They, they, didn't, they didn't really um, accomplish what they were supposed to. The piece should speak for itself. And since I'm basically just talking about the realm of representational art here, you know, I do use abstraction in, in, in the broadest sense of the word, and, and I will... Uh, say that that in some ways I, I do use abstract concepts, so I'm not going to go and and really bash abstract painters or anything. I, it's not my cup of tea, but at the same time, there's room for everybody. I mean, all this is just different ways 
of explaining and expressing yourself. And you've got to be comfortable um, with where you're going and be, um, you know, somewhat open-minded, obviously, to the fact that the world is a big place with lots of people and lots of ideas and lots of, lots of being accepting and being receptive to the fact that, that you know, this is all um, good stuff. You know, if you want to slap paint on a canvas and sling it against a wall or whatever you want to do, I mean, hey, more power to you. It's not what I'm going to be doing, but, but if you want to do that, that's fine. And, and again, what we're trying to do is actually prepare people to be able to communicate with, with, with their fellow man um, in such a way that, that it's, it's, it's articulate from a visual sense, meaning that it's the way the world actually represents itself. And these are si sciences and rules that we can't just have a, you know, schlock off to opinion and say, hey, I just think I, I don't really want to take the time to understand edges. Well, you're going to fail miserably in your, in your pursuit of trying to get something three-dimensional on a flat surface. Or, or values don't really matter to me, or I just am not going to study them. It's like saying, I want to be a great writer, but I just don't want to learn the alphabet. I mean, these are things that um, are so interconnected. Uh, and unfortunately, in a lot of art schools and a lot of classes that you, you've been in or probably have witnessed, they don't even really address these things. Either they're too boring to address or, or the teacher just kind of assumes that you know them or they don't know them themselves and have never been taught them. So it's just this kind of, um, kind of, this kind of silent um, you know, elephant in the room you know, where people just kind of you know, um, think that somehow uh, good drawing and good painters are, are, is a God-given gift that was bestowed upon you through genetics or whatever and that you're just going to um, all of a sudden be good. It's a, it's, a, it's a very, very methodical, scientific approach to learning the way the world represents itself and presents itself. So that's what we're kind of up against, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn to shed some light um, on, on these concepts and make it user-friendly for you so that you're really um, able, able to express yourself and all the wonderful ideas that you may have hidden either, either inside yourself or that you haven't even brought out yet or just basically um, have but don't have the skills to bring them out with any kind of real proficiency so you've been kind of avoiding um, avoiding them or frustrated by the fact that when you put them on paper or, or canvas they just don't read as good as the ideas that you have in your head ultimately we're going to flip that around the opposite direction and the work that comes down on your canvas and your paper is going to be superior to the idea that you originally had in your head and it's going to be so exciting to see when that moment occurs how much fun expressing yourself um, in whatever genre, whatever uh, discipline that you choose, it'll be at your disposal and you'll have all these, these um, skills from which to pick to express yourself. And it's just going to be, again, it's going to change your life. You're going to be, uh, you know, years down the road, you're going to look back and it's going to be a completely different ball game for you. So anyway, there's my little indication of, of a sphere um, free-handed with a single light source with some ambient light coming from other sources but also a fairly reflective surface but it gives us a good idea on how to freehand in that particular geometric shape okay last shape will be um, a pyramid and we'll kind of it's kind of a hybrid really the big ones again are going to be um, your sphere your cone your cylinder and your cube and then we can build those into more complex versions by beveling them and we'll get into talking about planes planes of the head, the planes of the body, where, you know, the way the body turns and how we can break it down into these uh, geometric shape re uh, driven um, angles which are going to affect value and ultimately color. Okay, so we're heading there. Stay tuned. All right, thanks.